I am your host, Patty Zor. And if you are watching this, we'd like to ask all of our viewers to please start a watch party. This will help us get our message out to all of those who need to hear it. One last housekeeping thing, my uh, teammate Casey is in the comments. So um, please feel free to leave your questions below or comments, we'd love to hear them. Joining me live today is Melina Wilson. Melina is a business and performance coach. Um, she is also an aspiring author, speaker. I also read you're a runner. And in addition to all of that, a mega real estate agent. And in fact, you were interviewed by uh, Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams in front of 14,000 peers. Is that right? It is right. That's a big audience. Let me tell you. Wow. We are really in a treat. Uh, to, we are really in for a treat today. So I'm really excited to get started. Um, so welcome, Lena, to the show. We're so glad you're here. Thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege. I'm really excited to uh, see what we unreveal in the 30 minutes we have. That's awesome. <laughs> so the show is called No Guts, No Glory. And so Melina, with your help, um, my hope is that we can give others the courage and strength uh, within themselves to make a change and have some guts and maybe take a leap if there's something that they've been thinking about. So if you're ready to get started, I would love to hear a story about a time in your career that took guts. Oh my gosh, there's been so <laughs> many of them, right? So um, I think that coming from a, a space in a childhood that had a ton of poverty and, and uh, a bit of chaos or more, um, I had an opportunity as an adult to really look at the fact that every time I've had a challenge and practice overcoming it, that there was always something even bigger than I could have envisioned on the other side. So pulling from, I'd say an inner strength, but also from the fact that I had experience and every time you take a leap of faith and find the other side to be one that you can land, Sometimes you bounce, you drop, you roll, then you get up, but you land. Um, and having faith in that allowed me many opportunities in my career. I actually have built careers not because I was headed there purposefully, but because I landed there out of a necessity. And part of that had to do with the poverty that I, I had. So, um, for example, if we look at the fact that I was a paraeducator when my kids were growing up in the public school system and I made $11,000 per year, but they covered the health insurance and I had a mindset that thought, gosh, how am I even going to let go of this? Took that leap of faith. And, but it wasn't purposeful that I landed in real estate. The way that that happened is that in the summer months when I wasn't at the school, I worked for an attorney who was offered an opportunity in a real estate brokerage. And he hired me out of the school system and I had to step out on faith, lose my health insurance and sign a contract with him because I made him promise me a job for at least one year if I was gonna leave that behind based on the health insurance that I needed at the time. We did so well with the brokerage that the broker actually sold the firm and I found myself unemployed in six months instead of that year's time. So my first leap of faith into real estate without even trying um, was that in the time that I had worked at that, I ran that brokerage office with that attorney and I had done so much real estate that some of the local realtors said, Melina, you really need to be a realtor. And so I jumped out in faith and the day that I got my license, usually you, you save six months worth of, of a salary to jump in. I signed the final check for the uh, association dues, it left me $40 in my bank account. Oh my God. That was at $40. And when this happened, when I lost that job, um, at the time I was married and my husband said, go back to the school, go, go back and grab the job again. They'll hire you back in a second. And I looked at him and I said, I can't go backwards. I have to go forward and I need to find something better. And yeah. I don't know what it is. And I have a really big God. And I invited him into that decision and I was just led to go into the unknown. So there's the dive off the diving board, the jump, the tuck and roll and know that I'm going to land. I'm not sure where, 
All I do know is that I'm not going to go backwards. So I got into real estate. I had a paycheck waiting for me the day I got licensed though as well, because I had done so much prospecting and, and trying to get business before I even had the right to earn the check. Um, and so I jumped into that real estate career. Now, when I went to university for a nanosecond, and there's a story behind that because it got a ripped out from underneath me, but um, staying true to my authentic self, one of the things that I love is, is travel. I absolutely love adventure and travel. And so I had gone to Western Washington University for um, an international business degree, but that got ripped and taken away from me. So I wasn't able to do that. But when I got into real estate, I thought, what a better vessel than to do global real estate. I'll focus in on a niche that nobody else has. And so I started an S Corp called International Real Estate Investments Incorporated. Gary Keller, the now CEO of Keller Williams, owner thereof, I used to answer the phone, uh, Keller Williams International before they even left Texas, right? Now we're the largest brokerage in the world. And I was in that same mindset. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna create what it is that I want and desire. I'm very true to authentic self and to building a life by design, even though sometimes life's punches is not at all my plan or design, but it's how we respond to it that really directs the outcome, even though we may not know the answers, staying true to authentic self will take you where you want to go and where you may discover you never even knew you were headed, which for me became global real estate. Oh my gosh. I love that. So it's so true. We're hearing this a lot that sometimes one opportunity leads to another and you have to keep moving forward. And I can totally relate to that. Um, I mean, so many times, you know, do you feel stuck and you don't know what to do? And as long as you just keep taking that next step forward to doing what you want to do, I want to hear more about living life by design. Can you fill us in on that a little bit? So, um, yes, yes. I'm a business coach too. So this, this whole domino effect, and if you, if you've, Never read the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazon. Um, this domino effect is described in there, but it's kind of that one thing that leads to the next thing that grows and builds the momentum to end up with the result. But truly, it's just taking the smaller action. Think small, go bigger, and um, the results will show up. But sometimes we get stuck on, on why and, and how to get there. And I'm just realizing I, what was the question? I went off on the domino. Oh. My energy is going up the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a two hour class too. <laughs> Don't even worry oh, about it. Yeah, no. she's been teaching all day. It's been a long day though. Totally fine. Um, yeah, I was just curious to know more about living life by design. By design. Okay. Yeah. So my design goes, woo. But um, one of the things that I learned in real estate, it's actually the profession that uh, I had to identify who I truly was more than any other profession. And I've, I, and not even profession, but jobs. Becoming a mom made me do an internal search. Being a paraeducator made me do an internal search. But living in the world of real estate and serving others and also being commission-based, not having a paycheck or the security or the safety and coming from a childhood that had a lot of poverty, some of my fears and old ideas were around a monetary security. Um, I have a God that's much bigger than that, but going out and, and being of service to God and his kids, the paycheck just kind of follows. I built a business on not a reputation, but the service that I provide. A lot of my clients don't know that I was ever interviewed by, by Gary Keller in front of 14,000 other realtors, right? It's really not important when they're buying a home or making a, a real estate decision. So this life by design though, uh, my kids were in high school when I took on this profession, but when you get going in real estate and you have $40 in your bank account, you work and you make calls and you make contacts and you get out there and you make flyers and you do whatever it takes to do, right? But it also can eat you up and consume you. You get into these habits of where you 
you can't shut it off at five o'clock. I had to, I had to have an accountability to create a, a part, an accountability partner to create a new habit of going home on time again. Once I had the ability to use leverage and to walk away, it was harder for me to actually reclaim that life by design than I ever thought it would be. So this life by design is truly being purposeful and being, um, absolutely on point with a calendar that that holds me accountable to the bigger goal so I may have a goal of closing so many transactions coaching so many clients teaching so many classes but my calendar needs to reflect that and the calendar can look super sexy and be all color-coded but if I'm not following it and I'm not purposeful to it then all of a sudden my calendar owns me or I'm ignoring it and there is no life by design. It's me, it's me suiting up and showing up to somebody else's fire or the chaos that I've created or um, uh, a change in an environment, even with COVID and the pandemic. How I respond to that, yes, I need to shift, I need to pivot, I need to show up to my life, but I also am not gonna be consumed by fear I'm going to have a life by design and being purposeful with my mindset um, and, and creating space to protect that. So what I do in this life by design is truly pinpoint what my authentic self is and follow that dream, no matter what a societal uh, opinion of it is, or whether it's a new bell and whistle, like a new tool in real estate. I know that my best gift is relationship with people. And so my business is built off that. And I'm gonna stay true to that. I also know that my core values are to my family and friends and to a God and my understanding. So I'm gonna make sure that that priority, and this is why I love Keller Williams because it's God, family, then business. Mm -hmm. um, this is why I only take 14 coaching clients. You can coach a lot more than that. But for me, I take 14 people that really want to do what it is that will change their life. Um, and I'm very selective in who I put into, into that world. We're the accumulation of the five people we spend the most time with. I'm not sure who that's from, but somebody brilliant, I'm sure. Um, I think it's Rowan, but I'm not sure. But I'm very, I'm very purposeful in the time spent and some of that time is spent with me and that God of my understanding so that I can stay in tune to staying true to my, my life's purpose. I have a life purpose statement that I measure everything against. Oh, can we hear it? Yes, you can. And it's, so, it's going to become a quote card, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I made this years ago when I didn't know which direction I was going or what I was going to do. And it was in the midst of a, of a job loss. And I didn't know what the answer was going to be. So I was in the tumble and roll. But I needed my life's purpose. And since then, I've measured every job to it, every decision every relationship to it, but it's very simple. It's my life purpose is to use my unconditional love and positive energy to inspire and encourage others to reach their maximum potential within themselves and with those closest to them. This shines God's glory on a global um, vision. So even at the time that I had God and glory or global vision in there, that I didn't even know I was going into global real estate. Right. I can take that measurement if I'm um, arguing with my teenager and think, am I inspiring and encouraging right here? My kids oh. are now grown. So that tells you how long I've had this life statement. They're both realtors in California and aspiring actresses and amazing human beings. My kids, I just can't even tell you, they inspire me daily. So, um, but that little statement is the measurement to how I show up in a real estate transaction, um, how I guide somebody in a coaching relationship for their business to how I interact with, um, you know, the checkout gal at the, at the grocery store. Am I on my phone? Am I fully present with her? Am I, do I have an encouraging word or can I inspire her in any way? Right. So um, it's just a measurement tool. It's a compass per se, true North compass. Yeah. Am I inspiring and encouraging? Uh, you mentioned the calendar that you use. Is that something that you share with your clients or you share with the public? 
<laughs> the um, calendar that you follow to help you live your life by design. So that calendar um, was an indicator for me when I realized that I was off kilter. So one of the best things I ever heard was um, that I, that you should be seeking counterbalance instead of balance. I was always looking for balance and I was always failing. Okay. But what I want in my life is counterbalance. And the counterbalance means if, I, if I'm balanced, I'm flatlined, I'm gray. I have an adventurous spirit. I need to be learning something new, going someplace, hiking the Italian mountains. I need, I need something new. So it's never going to be in balance. But what I need to do is look for counterbalance. And that's when the teeter-totter starts to go. So instead of having a life where it, I hit the ground and I'm thrown out and I'm quitting my job because I hate it now, right? Like I'm looking for that counterbalance. How can I make sure that I have more downtime, white space, creativity, spiritual time, time with friends and family, we're out running, whatever it may be. Am I, do I have a trip to Peru planned? Just got canceled. I'm heartbroken. Oh. But um, I wonder why, right? <laughs> but it's all good. Um, but that calendar for me has evolved over the years. One, my love for it instead of my hate for it. Um, two, gives me permission to say no to so many things. And sometimes as your world gets bigger, it's actually saying no to things you really want to do versus things you don't want to do anymore. Because as your world is more by design, the opportunities that come to you are brilliant. I want to say yes to so much. So that's, that calendar protects this life by design but I'm very purposeful in it and intentional. So there's white space, there's time off, there's spiritual space, there's health. If you ask me for a meeting before eight o'clock in the morning, the answer is no, because there's health and God. And um, there's just, that's my time, right? So it's by design. So if the meeting, if, if you want the meeting before eight, I just have to respectfully decline. If you're on, we're doing this on a Thursday, this is my mastery day. So I have two days that are real estate and then I have two days that are coaching and I have one day that's mastery oh. so that I can absolutely have the white space to either learn a new skill, research for a coaching client or, um, you know, maybe a new tool for my real estate team. So I have a mastery day and then an equal amount in both of those other pieces, or maybe I'm writing a new class. Like today before this, I taught a class for two hours with a, another coach. It was brilliant. I love it. The, I have a little shirt that a friend made me. That's really sweet. Cause I always say I'm addicted to the ahas. <laughs> I'll tell you the minute somebody goes, Oh, that's a great question. Or, Oh my gosh, now I get it. That's like ice cream for me. I just love it. Just love it. Or good gelato. It's good stuff. <sighs> Um, you talked a little bit about doing an internal search to find out who you really are. Um, any tips or advice for the audience as far as maybe how to look inward and help discover some of that, or perhaps you have some tools or books that you've used to help you with the process? Yeah, so many books and so many tools, but it truly, it's an inside journey. So, I mean, i gosh, I don't know. I had a hippie mom growing up and, and I had Catholic grandmother. So I've been dipped and dunked and baptized and Hari Krishna yeah. and Romeo Horangi, you know, lived in a TP VW van, um, houseboat, hitchhiked across the state. So, oh um, so once again, some of the crazy is also some of the gift. It was wonderful. But um, um, one of the things that I believe, and this is going to contradict, once again, I don't necessarily always fall into the trend. It's my life experience that I share. I think that a lot of the people that I work with, whether I coach or other realtors that I may mentor, sometimes the why gets so intimidating and it's such a trend right now. What's the big why, right? And we hear it in some of the best literature, like you have to find the goal and then make your way there. The why is difficult for some people to figure out why, you know, what is my purpose? Why, why do I want to get out of bed every day? What are my passions? And I think that people will get stuck and then walk away from the discovery. 
for me, I think one of the best tools, and I've taught classes that I've written, I used to teach to the Jack Canfield success principles. Um, just, you know, the one thing uh, is a great book to go into some of that discovery too. But I think one of the best exercises is to kind of look back to your child. And this is a class that we taught today, the pursuit of finding your authentic self, going back to what drove you as a child to pure joy and happiness. Like we all grew up wanting to do something. I wanted to dance. I still love to dance. I love adventures. And I used to play office with carbon paper instead of with dolls. Right. And I've landed in all those places. Although if you asked me in the eighties, when I was going to college, what that plan looked like, it, it's nothing like how I got here. But the authentic, the passion, the true Melina was as much in me as a kid as it is today. And, and so I would go back to the childhood that you had and think, what, you know, what was, what would, did I want to be? What did I play a musical instrument? Did I want to sing? Did I want to dance? Did I want to travel the world? What was it? Find that a little bit. Doesn't even matter if you can't identify that. Some folks, that's a hard thing. But then think about your life today. And if any of that is in it, or have you put so much of that joy aside? And then take out a piece of paper and write out your perfect day. And the funny thing is it could be, hey, I got up at seven o'clock this morning and uh, I went with her for a run with a golden retriever. And then I got home and I put on my Pete's organic coffee and <laughs> I could smell it in the kitchen and I whipped this up for breakfast and then I called so-and-so and then I went into my office and I did three hours of work and then I came out and let the dog out and, you know, called so-and-so. And and this is, if you're a talker, you're calling people all day long, but had another organic meal and da, da, da. It isn't about knowing what the work was. It's about the fact that you found joy. What other parts of your day bring you joy? Where, because then you're going to get into the evening maybe. And you say, Hey, I met up with Sally and we're going to go do this nonprofit organization. And we're going to volunteer three three hours there. Like if you go through the art of writing out a perfect day, you're going to find little snippets of where your joy is and your authentic self is. And then you take that day and you go, okay, what would it look like if I tried to get to that day within five years? Right. Cause the, the big trendy saying right now is you can do anything if you put five years behind it. Right. If you are dedicated, you can create any life that you want within five years. So let's use five years. So if I wanted that life, what would that look like? What would that work be that would allow me that volunteerism or what volunteerism or apprenticeship could I get into that allows me that work or what musical instrument have I mastered in that time frame, Right. And then go back. Okay, so five years, what did it look at three years to get to five years? Go back to one year, but then go back 30 days and then go back to what's one thing that I can do today that will get me closer. And it may be putting one hour in your calendar every single Saturday morning before the kids get up to to write out how you're going to get there, right? You don't need to know the how, but you have to start the action to build a map, to reverse engineer it both ways. Like what, what would it take? It doesn't matter where the money is. It doesn't matter where the time is. It just matters that you get to one action per day. And that action might even just be time blocking it in your calendar somewhere so you'll commit to it. And then the other thing, and I'm a coach, is that accountability. I mean, I, I, I asked Wendy Papazon, who's the wife of Jay Papazon, who wrote the One Thing book, if she would help me with an accountability piece. And, um, and the reason I asked her is because I knew she would kick my booty into it. She's a, she's a no BS kind of gal. And I said, Hey, I'm not leaving the office at five 30 and my life by design says I can, I have leverage. There's no reason that I'm staying. This is ridiculous. Will you be my accountability partner? And she said, yeah. And that's when you get to pleasure or pain. Am I motivated by pain or am I motivated by pleasure? For me, it's pain. I don't want to, pay you $50 if I don't leave. And I'm totally honest in all my affairs. So if I don't leave by 5.30, I'm going to tell you the truth. The first check I wrote her for $50, she sent me a receipt that she had submitted it to a campaign, not of my choice. 
<laughs> and the second threat that she gave me for the second check, I won't even tell you, but within three weeks, I had built a habit of leaving the office at 5.30. My team was on board. They all knew I was writing her a check. They all saw the receipt to the campaign and I got myself out of there. So you can know it, but sometimes you need the, the help of somebody with the accountability piece to it. Oh my gosh, there were so many good nuggets in that. So I was even taking notes to <laughs> just remembering things that I can use in my, my own world. But I loved how you said, you know, what, write out what your perfect day looks like. How can you get there in five years and then reverse engineer it and then just spend one hour a day to do what it takes to get there. I just love that so much. What a great tip. It's so easy to follow, but um, yeah, you know, maybe it takes an accountability coach to help you get there. So can you um, tell us how our viewers can get in contact with you and um, for your, if they're interested in learning more about your coaching services? Yeah, absolutely. You can either contact me on Facebook. My spelling and my name is so unusual. So it's Melina Wilson, M-A-L-L-I-N-A -L -L -I -I Wilson. So if you plop that in and message me there, I can respond. Um, or my email address is Melina at MelinaWilson.com. So once again, M-A-L-L-I-N-A -L -L -I -I at MelinaWilson.com. But do reach out. I'd be glad to, to chat and we can set up a, a discovery call for sure. Melina, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. I mean, so many good nuggets. I'm just so excited. And um, it really was a pleasure. And uh, to the audience to tune in, um, I hope you got as much out of this as I did. We appreciate um, your support. And again, please uh, share this. Start a watch party. There's so many people who need to hear this message. Have a wonderful, it's getting close to the end of the day here for East Coast. It's pretty near. So thank you again, everyone. And uh, have a great, great evening. Awesome. Thank you.